Good morning, everyone. My name is Renek Calandria, and I am an associate professor at the University of Perpetual Health in Las Peñas, Manila. And I also work as the care coordination manager at Innova Psychiatric Assessment Center here in Fairfax, Virginia. So my topic is on rethinking the teachings and epistemology of St. Augustine. The life of St. Augustine is a testament of man's sinful tendencies and human weakness, yet it, is also, it also reveals the infinite goodness of God. The stories may happen thousands of years ago and may sound medieval, but they resonate the current arguments about man's existential situatedness, his moral, spiritual, social, and political struggle towards a meaningful existence. The rhetorical presentation of his life, as told by St. Augustine himself, are nothing but true confessions of man's search for freedom, interiority, justice, and the pursuit for truth. These existential realities, as told by St. Augustine, seem too far in space and time, yet too close to the heart of contemporary men. After his conversion, St. Augustine's life dramatically changed as he devoted his time not only in philosophical discourse, but on theological studies and service to the church, where after his ordination to the priesthood, he spent most of his pastoral life not only in preaching and teaching, but in debating against the heresies of his time. St. Augustine's deep commitment as a philosopher, theologian, and defender of faith is, worth, is worthy of an intellectual reckoning because his life and teachings run uh, through such extreme passion and doubt that even the sinner can draw hope from his conversion, the devout can follow in the footsteps of his holiness, the philosopher and theologians can learn from his wisdom, and the student in arts and humanity will perpetually feel interest in the struggling of a soul to decentral itself from the fierce promptings of passion and the seduction of intellectual pride. There has been limited literature on the question of consensual causality and the intuitive nature of St. Augustine's epistemology, specifically the role of divine illumination in the knowledge of the truth. This is the research gap which this study would like to fill in. This hermeneutical analysis of St. Augustine's teachings and epistemology aim to explore the meaning and understanding of existential causality and the intuitive nature of his epistemology, specifically the role of divine illumination in the knowledge of the truth. This research, this paper, is a qualitative research and using hermeneutical and textual analysis of St. Augustine's teaching and epistemology in relation to the apparent conflict between faith and reason. This approach will focus on understanding the meaning and role of divine illumination and involve systemic analysis of textual content in academic literature to identify themes and meanings in our understanding of faith and reason. The study involves a, system, a systematic review of existing academic literature especially his famous books on the Confessions and the City of God. The academic literature used are translations from scholars of St. Augustine and known Augustinian academic experts. Other existing literatures and studies are considered to gather rich data that can provide deep philosophical insights and understanding in the interpretation of St. Augustine's rhetoric. This qualitative study use thematic analysis. The textual and interpretative readings of academic literature involve identification of patterns and themes consistent when St. Augustine's philosophy and theology as narrated in the Confessions and the City of God. This paper will also directly be quoting St. Augustine's words so that the readers will have the opportunity to read it from the teacher's mind and judge for themselves how far he relates to the feelings and sentiments of the contemporary world and the modern faithful of the Church of Rome, rather than mere readings of dogmatic citations. The discussions of this research in St. Augustine, St. Augustine's made his uh, intellectual debut 
by making an assertion that the eternal logos rest in the history of Jesus Christ, the inward illuminator and the principium or beginning of knowledge. This assertion serves as St. Augustine's opening salvo in introducing a new Christian epistemology that emphasizes the primacy of faith over reason. He once declared that faith precedes reason because unless you believe, you cannot and you will not understand. In declaring the primacy of faith, he argues that faith must precede ratio, not because reason is intrinsically incompetent, but because reason in a man's will or whose will rather has not submitted to the grace of the mediator is an untrustworthy reason. St. Augustine's philosophical dogma, which asserts that faith precedes knowledge and understanding, seems to suggest not only that faith is asserting a proposition to be true before having any justification to believe that such proposition is true, but it, it also suggests that the intelligibility of sensible reality may appear idolatrous given that temporal realities are elevated to the status of eternal goods. Now, note that this apparent epistemic error failed to understand St. Augustine's view of man as created in the image of God and endowed with reason, a rational animal whose very nature it is to reason and who has reason before he understands. St. Augustine's epistemology, which emphasizes the precedence of faith over reason, does not undermine the significance of reason, nor does it suggest any competing roles of faith and reason in the process of knowing and understanding. St. Augustine showed the inter interconnectedness and complementarity of faith and reason by presenting two epistemologies regarding sensible realities. Number one, that, what re that which relates to sensible objects intelligible to us as they physically appear, and the other goes beyond their physical appearance to prove their structure, their essence, and the source of their existence. God's functionality is not just a thoughtful parallelism to the function of the person of the Holy Trinity, but recognition of the rational proofs of the existence of God, which is dialectical in nature and is instrumental in the process as viewed from its final end, rendering the cause and effect uh, theory intelligible. St. Augustine writes in the Confession, we did not make ourselves, but he made us who abides forever. St. Augustine's believed that man could begin to comprehend the existence of God and create a theological justification by starting in the sensible world in which we live and move towards the soul, the pinnacle of God's creation. Although there has not been any systemic approach to the doctrine of illumination anywhere in St. Augustine's work, but he made several references to God as the intelligible light and our illumination, who referred to him as the superior light by which the human mind is illuminated and ultimately acknowledging the presence, acknowledging through the process, rather, of illumination as the essence of cognition. Although man fails or falls into the trap of ignorance, but the divine illuminator and mediator comes to us in time to release us from the bondage of ignorance, self-love, uh, self and pride. Man is rescued through the illuminating activity of God, and even in his fallenness, his reason is exalted by the divine informing so that God is the light of which are known whatsoever things are known, temporal or eternal. St. Augustine's, and in such informing action by the truth, is apprehended a priori, according to St. Augustine. As he would always say in the confession, they are in my heart even before I have learned them. St. Augustine is popularly known as the theologian of interiority because of the introspective nature of his famous masterpiece, The Confessions. 
The theory of interiority refers to the idea of the inner self or self-reflection, which plays front and center in St. Augustine's philosophical and theological thought. His existential desire for inner peace and his journey towards the interiorized self has not been easy because it requires that he disavow the apparent truths that he discovered from Cicero's portentous. According to St. Augustine, the purpose of interiority is not only to find the self, but to discover God within, that place where Christ teaches and reveals the truth. St. Augustine's idea of interiority paves the way to a new theological understanding of the divine's presence within man, where we are only we are not only engaged rather in an interior conversation with God, but in such interiorization serves as a gateway to God's luminous power in individual souls. The pilgrimage towards God starts within the self, where our inner space thoughts and emotions are examined and journeyed through the encounter of God. And in that dialogue, the inner teacher teaches and reveals the truth. St. Augustine's spiritual and moral conversion serves as the answer to that restless journey which he acknowledged in Book 1 of the Confession, where he says, My heart is restless until it rests in thee. <clears throat> the new understanding, St. Augustine's new understanding of personal identity being self-reflective, he totally transformed the idea of friendship and with that changed the relational dynamics between individual and the community. It is a kind of friendship where two distinct human beings and two souls are observed into one, a reduction of two identities into one. St. Augustine himself writes in the Confession, for I thought of my soul and his soul as one soul in two bodies. St. Augustine defined friendship through the prism of the divine and not a mere relation, a human, not a mere human connection rather, but a relationship characterized by spiritual dimension that will bring man closer to God. The relational aspect of this type of friendship will serve as a foundation of the monastic life where a group of friends will come together, united by the ideal of an utmost dedication to the community life and a search for wisdom. The pedagogi uh, pedagogical theory of St. Augustine stems from his philosophical and uh, theological belief about the central role of God and the transformational power of the divine uh, divine truth, rather, and illumination in the teaching and learning process. To this end, the goal of education in St. Augustine is not only the knowledge of God, but a deeper love of God. His teaching methodology mirrors both the Platonic and Socratic approaches where knowledge of the world is seen in and through God rather than God seen in, in and through the world. His epistemological knowledge and his epistemological approach is mostly influenced by the, by the Platonic doctrine on the innate character of knowledge within the soul. St. Augustine went further with his theory of divine illumination where truth actually sits within the soul waiting to be discovered through the act of enlightenment by the superior and intelligible light, which St. Augustine calls and referred to him as God. While communication serves as a tool to teaching and learning, St. Augustine reminds us that there is a certain kind of teaching through reminding or remembering. And this is, of course, understandable because, his belief, because of his belief in the innate nature of knowledge. According to St. Augustine, we learn through the process of remembering, and the person who reminds us of something is actually teaching. St. Augustine concludes that communication or speaking has the sole purpose of teaching and reminding either others or ourselves. With St. Augustine's intuitive approach to learning, where ideas are a priori in the mind and the soul of the human person, it is safe to say that rationalism found its way in the doctor of the church. In conclusion, 
The contributions of St. Augustine in the study of philosophy and theology are remarkably significant, not only because his theological teachings were adopted by the church, but because of his enlightened discussion of the preeminence of faith over reason and his discovery of the role of the will we are key in unlocking both the problem of theological knowledge and ethics. The problem of human existence in St. Augustine is best summarized in his famous question, you who want to know yourself, do you know you are? Which resembles René Descartes' famous dictum, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. Although there is no evidence that Descartes was influenced by St. Augustine, but both Latin maxims presuppose the existence of a doer because the very act of doubting and thinking assumes the actuality of a doubter and a thinker. And since doubting is an intellectual act proper only to rational animal, all other, all other capacities of the mind, including memory, understanding, recognition, judgment, and will, among others, are also associated in the act of doubting, since hence, hence rather, therefore, uh, they are also actual and certain, like doubt itself. Saint Augustine's epistemology is succinctly intertwined with his theory of divine illumination, referring to God as the cause of existing, saying in the city of God, in Him are to be found the cause of existence the ultimate reason for the understanding and further writing in the confession, we did not make ourselves, but he made us who abides forever. The a priori nature of knowledge and St. Augustine's rationalistic approach to learning and understanding is rooted in the theory of interiority, which is the gateway towards the real and ultimate truth, which dwells within and was referred to St. Augustine's by God as God. The ultimate goal of self-reflection is to see and discover the truth. And in St. Augustine's theory, the Socratic method of knowing thyself goes far beyond mere self-knowledge. Rather, introspection leads us towards the knowledge of him who is the ultimate truth. The theory of interiority refers to the idea of the inner self or self-reflection, which plays front and center in St. Augustine's philosophical and theological thought. According to St. Augustine, the purpose of interiority is not only to find the self, but to discover God within the play, that place where Christ teaches and reveals the truth. The concept of interiorization is reflective in St. Augustine's teaching pedagogy where God's transformative power and illumination have central roles in the teaching and learning process. St. Augustine's theology of interiority takes a reflexive twist where religion turns man's thoughts within. Explicitly describing the introversion methods, saying, do not wish to go outside, stay inside. Truth dwells in the inner man. And, a, and a just like Carl Jung's uh, psychological mantra saying, go, uh, go not outside, truth dwells in the inner man. St. Augustine's reflective method, having been directed and turned inward by religion, necessarily a natural result in self-assurance. St. Augustine's epistemology is distinctly connected to the theory of divine illumination and the only pathway towards knowledge of the truth is through interiority because it is in the inner self where we encounter and dialogue with the inner teacher who teaches and reveals the truth. Knowledge is acquired through the learning process and awakened in man's soul through divine illumination. So no one knows except through the learning, through learning, hence for anyone who learns, understands, and everyone who understands is doing good. If his justification and the impossibility of an ad infinitum argument, especially on the issue of cause and effect, as one of his most compelling contributions to philosophy, then his doctrine of illumination and interiority are his significant footprints in theological studies. One may, argue, one may not agree with St. Augustine's epistemology, but as Spencer, 
would argue, God will remain mysterious because for man to understand God is to contain God within the nature of the human brain and lower down his nature within the level of man. And if the argument on eternal truth and goodness are pointless for deductive reasoning, the empirical data are equally pointless in the final analysis for theological and religious purposes. Knowledge of the truth sits within science. Knowledge of the truth rather sits within which science will fail and will always fail to understand because empiricism never gets along with rationalism. Thank you very much and um, have a great day.